What's the matter? Oh, I've been sneezing. That uh, my eyes have been running, and my chest is all tight. Oh gosh! What do you want to see Mr. Brown for? I thought he'd give me a little while off to go over and see the doctor. Oh gee, Mick, Mr. Brown isn't in the right mood to ask favors of today. Now, what's so abnormal about wanting a little time off to go see doctor? Oh, well, this is different. The New York office is breathing fire down his neck. What, what, what's the matter? That new singing sensation on the other network killed the rating on our biggest show. Well, what do they want Mr. Brown to do about it? They want him to find a new discovery to compete with him. Huh. Well, look, Pat, could you ask Mr. Brown if he could see me for just a few minutes? It's a, it's a case of life or death. Okay, Mickey. <laughs> Mr. Brown? Yes? Mickey Mulligan would like to see you for a moment. He says it's a matter of life or death. Whose life or death? Yes, sir. Tell him I can't be bothered with trivialities. Hi, Pat. Hi, Mick. Hi, Fred. What's the matter? He doesn't feel well. No. Well, why don't you go ask Brown for the day off? Mr. Brown won't even see him. Well, you see, I wanted to ask him if I could go over and see my doctor. And that warden in there wouldn't even see you? Wouldn't see me. Well, if I were you, I'd just walk right in there and say, You, I'm taking a couple hours off. What do you think about that, Charlie? You would? Sure. If I were you. What if you were you? Oh, well, uh, that's, yeah, that's a different story. Wait man. a minute, Mick, just a minute. I'm trying to help you. What's ailing you? I, look, I got a little trouble with my eyes, my nose, throat, my lungs and chest. And, and a funny tingling sensation all the way through? Yeah, that's right. Oh, well, yeah. then there's, there's nothing to it, Mick. Oh, uh, what is it? Well, it's mind over matter, that's all. What do you mean? Well, you see, you've got to take your mind off your eyes, nose, throat, chest and lungs. I know, but you know where my trouble is, Fred? Where? In the eyes, nose, throat, chest and lungs. But <laughs> my friend, you're right. Will you trust me? Sure. The trick is to switch it. What do you mean? Just stand up straight. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now relax. Yeah. Okay? Right. <laughs> What's, what's on your mind? Murder. No, no, don't get excited. Don't get angry. It's just a trick of elementary psychology. Switch it. If you two don't take your minds off of everything and get back to work, you're going to get into trouble. What's going on in here? What's the matter with you, Mulligan? It's my leg, Mr. Brown. It hurts me something awful. Yeah, he hurt it in the line of duty. Well, for goodness sakes, why don't you take an hour off and go see a doctor? May I take an hour off, sir? I just said so, didn't I? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Be sure you're back in 20 minutes. You have an allergy, young man. I have an allergy? What's an allergy? Whatever it is, I think he's going to stab it to death. Huh? Allergies are still somewhat of a mystery to the medical profession. But you're not going to solve it with that, are you, Doc? An allergy is something that conflicts with normalcy. We'll have to send a sample of your blood to the laboratory to determine exactly to what you're allergic. I, I, I'm allergic to that needle, I can tell you that now. That's what oh, I'm allergic to. Don't be silly, Mick. There's nothing to be afraid of. Huh? All he does is take that needle, see, and he jabs ah! it around. Yeah. And he twists it around. Oh, just a little bit. That's Stop. all. Stop. What, what are you doing? What are you doing, Doctor? Easy what now. You, what, what are you going to do? What, what are you going to do, Doctor? What, just what tightening do? this up so we can see the vein. I know, but you're choking my arm. When this sample comes back from the laboratory, I'll be able to make a serum which should cure whatever is causing your condition. Yeah, but, but you got something to fix the congestion here? Yes, I'll give you some medicine to ease your congestion. But until then, I'm afraid your vocal cords will continue to be affected. The toxic condition is settled in your throat. Uh, my throat. Steady now. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, he's going to stick it in. Wait a minute, he's going to... It won't hurt a bit, Mick. <laughs> that wasn't too bad now, was it? <laughs> Fix me up pretty good. Let me hold. 
you in my arms and say I love you. Let me show you paradise you've never seen. <laughs> Let me take you for a ride into the spheres, dear. Your fears, dear, will disappear, dear. Michael, will you stop listening to the radio and come into breakfast? Okay, <clears throat> okay Mom. Let me build my castles high into the sky, dear. You'll see all our dreams come true out in the blue. And when you're there beside me close, the most intoxicating thing to say will be hard. Good morning, son. Good morning, dear. No morning kiss? I'm afraid I might hurt you. Do you feel better this morning? Michael, your mother just asked you a question. You don't have to yell at her. Is your throat still bothering you that much? It's a little better, Mom. You know, you, you won't believe this. It breaks things. Oh, Michael, Zika, you were perfectly able to answer me when I called to you before. Yeah, I've known you all your life, and you were never afraid to talk. All right, but don't be frightened at what you hear now. Grab your glass pop. Good morning. Well, good morning <laughs> good to you. Good morning. That's that's strange. When I was singing in there just now. When you were what? Are you sure you feel all right, dear? Excuse me. Let me hold you in my arms and say I love you. Let me show you paradise you've never seen. Let Michael, do we have to listen to the radio? At least get something good. Betty, I've, I've, I've got to talk to you. Where you been? You're late. I know, I know, but look, can I see you for just a minute? No, no, not now. Mr. Brown put me on guard here. Look, they're going to audition in there, man. Let me talk to you for just a but minute. You can't you, please. What are you trying to do, make me lose my job? I'm supposed to keep people out of here. Get over by the screen. We don't want them to see us from the control booth. What's the matter with you? Have you gone crazy? That's what I want to know. Freddie, you used to know me when I was normal, didn't you? Well, I've only known you a few years. <laughs> this was just yesterday. Fred, i got to tell you something. Well, go on. Tell me. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Well, everything's just about ready for the auditions. Gee, I hope you have some luck today. No, I've just about given up hope, Glenn. You know, I've auditioned over two dozen singers this week already. Now, that rare quality and talent isn't too easy to find. <laughs> You're telling me. Well, we got a couple of minutes. I'll check everything. All right. And that's the truth, believe me. Look, Mick, I wish I could help you, but I got to get back out there. Oh, wait a minute. I, I want you to hear me, Fred. Just listen to this. Uh, what'll I sing? Oh, yeah. Let me hold you in my arms. Let me hold you in my arms. And say I love you. Let me show you. Shall I cut a record of it? I don't even know who it is yet, but you might as well. Yeah. Let me take you for a ride into the spheres, dear. Your fears, dear, will disappear, dear. Let me build my castles high into the sky. Hey, that boy's got something. You'll see all our dreams come true. He's sensational. And when you're there beside me close, the most intoxicating thing to say. Who is he? I can't see him. He's hidden behind the screen. There's 
our new golden throat. That boy's really got it. Well, Freddy, uh, now what do you think? For Mickey Mulligan, it isn't too bad. There's our answer to the other network. Mickey Mulligan the Golden... <laughs> Mickey Mulligan! <laughs> What's the matter, Pat? All I know is Mr. Brown wants to see you immediately. Oh, I pleaded with him. Stay out of the studio. Now we're in trouble. Um, the, the, the... Did he want to see me too, Pat? No, only Mickey. It's my fault, Freddie. Fault lies with me. Mr. Brown, Mickey Mulligan is here to see you, sir. Send him right in. You heard him. <sighs> Goodbye, friend. <laughs> Mr. Brown. Michael, my boy. <laughs> How are you? So glad to see you. Have a cigar, huh? No, no, on second thought, you'd better not. It might be too strong for you. You gotta protect that voice, you know. Come right in, make yourself at home, Michael. Sit down. This is even more than I could have ever dreamed of. What heart. What human interest. Como was a barber, Eckstein an usher, Fisher a choir boy, and you an IBC page boy. We'll endear you to millions of people. You'll be the shining example to all the young men of America. You mean you're not going to fire me, Mr. Brown? Fire you, my boy. We're going to sign you to a life contract. If there's anything I know, Michael, it's talent. Do you know what I said when I heard you sing? Uh, I said, that's it. Oh, what do you, you mean you heard my voice? We even cut a record of it. Yes, sir. We're going to get your publicity campaign started today. Well, Mr. Brown, I, I wasn't in exactly my best voice. Don't <laughs> worry, my boy. I understand you artists. You need mood, background, violin. Mr. Brown? Pardon me. Yes. Yes? Mr. Horton from publicity, sir. Send him right in. Now we're really going to get things rolling. Come in, Horton. This is our boy. Now, I want the works, you understand? Pictures, biography, family life, everything. And the name is Mulligan. That's right. Mickey Mulligan. Yeah, the name's got to go. Yes, you're right. It should be something mellifluous. Yeah. And something that girls can pronounce and sigh at the same time. That's the idea, Horton. But, gentlemen, excuse me, what's wrong with Mickey Mulligan? Who ever heard of anybody named Mickey Mulligan? No, no, it's got to go. Oh, how is my mother going to wake me up in the morning? I've got it. Perry Fisher. No, no, it, it doesn't strike me, Horton. Bincomo. You're getting closer. Mario Mulligan. Mario Mulligan. Mario, Mario Mulligan. Mulligan. Something for everybody, that's it. Mario Mulligan? Okay, and now for some candid photos, Jim. Mario Mulligan. Hold it right there. Great. And now, Mario, just stand right there and give us some humility. Humility? Um. <laughs> Is this humility, you know? It's unnatural. Take it. Fine. Now, one for the Bobby Soxers. Bobby Soxers? Charming, then. Yeah, we have to push this band. We got it. Yeah, 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 Turn around, I want to talk to you. Pardon me, but are you talking to me? Indubitably. <laughs> now, if you listen, son, I'll give you some stupendous information. All right, take it. Great. Well, that does it for now. We'll get this snowball rolling. Thank you, Horton. Well, Mario, my boy, you're on your way to stardom with IBC. Gosh, I only hope I can make good for you. Tell me, Mario, why have you kept this glorious voice to yourself all these years? Selfish me. <laughs> you know, I could go for some coffee. How about you? Yes, Mr. Brown, I'm, I'm quite famished. Why don't you call me Charles? All right, Chuck. <laughs> 
you send a page in here, please? Yes, sir. Freddie's right here in the office. This is a great day. You sent for me, Mr. Brown? Yes, Freddie. Would you please run down and get some coffee for Mario and me? Yes, sir. Coffee for... Mario? Yes, Mario. Mario Mulligan. Yes, and Freddie, be a good chap and get me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on date nut bread. And have them trim the edges, please. Trim the edges? Yes, if Mario wants the edges trimmed, Freddie, have them trimmed. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, this has gone far enough. Ever since last week, Michael's been getting more and more impossible, and he's broken every mirror in the house. Now, Joe. Don't now, Joe, me. All you're doing is to help spoil him. I see no harm in wanting our son to get used to fine living. After all, he is going to become a big star. Sunday breakfast at 12.30. And the kitchen isn't good enough. Oh, Joe, that was my idea. And this Mario business. Mario Mulligan. We should feel proud of him. I was proud of him long before he became an artiste. This is a fine time of life for his voice to be changing. Oh, I almost forgot his favorite record. His favorite record? It's driving me crazy. He lulls himself to sleep with it every night and keeps me awake. Shh. He's coming now. Morning. Good morning, Father. It's afternoon. Uh, what is time but time? Uh, look at this brunch, huh? Did you sleep well? Not well at all. In fact, a bit restless. Oh, this is a lovely passage here. This. Yeah, it grows on you like a wart. Now enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> Thank you, Mother. You're sweet. Oh, and listen to this. This passage here. Oh, hey, Michael, you're in the paper again. So you're getting a lot of... Michael. <laughs> Mario. Yes, Father. That doesn't. <laughs> Tell you, Pat, I've never seen anything like it. I don't recognize him anymore. I just don't recognize him anymore. Yesterday, he said to me, like this, with the fingers, like this. <laughs> the name. The name. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Frederick, my boy, how are you? Me, his old pal. Well, what about me? I'm his old girl. That's what he calls me. Pet old girl. Patricia, old girl, and, uh, and, um, um, Frederick. Frederick, Frederick, how are you this afternoon, my dear? Oh, and how are you this afternoon, Mr. Mulligan? Ah, no need to be formal with me. Just call me Mario. Say, tell me, boss man in? I believe Mr. Brown is in. How shall I announce you? With chime? Uh, no, needn't bother. Oh, may I say that you look exceedingly lovely this afternoon? A flower? Or a flower? <laughs> Charles, my boy! Mario! What a fashion plate! <laughs> Sartorial splendor. Yes, yes, nothing but the best, you know. It looks perfect. Are you all set for your coast-to-coast -coast television debut Saturday night? If they're waiting for me, my fans, I shan't disappoint them. Spoken like a true trooper, Mario. <laughs> and immediately following your debut, we're going to flood the country with your records. Oh. Mm-hmm. IBC is going to go all out. We're going to make you the biggest little thing... <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, it's nothing at all. Just an allergy I contracted when I was an unknown. Will you be all right? Oh, yes. Nothing to fret about or worry. I was on my way to the physician now, in fact. Oh, well, thank goodness. You'd better get right over there. I'll have you driven. That's thoughtful, Charles. <laughs> Pat, will you send a page boy in here immediately, please? Freddy's right here, sir. Good. Mario, you must get more rest. You've been working too hard lately. <laughs> You sent to me, Mr. Brown? Yes, Freddy. I want you to drive Mario to a specialist immediately. Use my car and please drive slowly. I don't want Mario made nervous. If I get into an accident, sir, I'll throw my body protectively over his. <laughs> Such loyalty, Frederick. Arrivederci, Charles. Serum should do the trick. You see, I don't dare to. I don't dare sneeze or it costs my network a pretty penny. Oh? 
Not to mention how it would affect millions of fans. True, Frederick, true. Sure, one sneeze from Mr. Mulligan here and 40 million people would catch cold. Oh. Is that right? Well, then by all means, we must cure him. We can't let an epidemic get started, can we? Oh, oh wait, wait just a minute. Uh, would you like me to take the shot for you? Oh, thank you. It's very nice of you. No, no, you don't have to. Carry on, doctor. I have a lot of rest to get. I have work ahead of me, too. No, take it easy, doc. Wait a minute. He's going to stick it. Ow! Oh, such pear-shaped tones. There you are, young man. It'll be a few days before that takes effect, but then your trouble should be over. But tell me, Doc, just what change will take place? Oh, nothing too noticeable. Sneezing will disappear, the watering of the eyes. Five minutes till airtime, Mr. Mulligan. Thank you, son. Charles. Uh, Thank goodness you're all right. Yes, I'm fine. It happened when I hit my high F. Tell me, how do I look? Elegant. Elegant, huh? Oh, uh, Antra. Oh, Mr. Mulligan, there are some distant relatives to see you. Your mother and father. Oh, well, tell them to come right in. Now, Mario. No, you... it's quite all right, Charles. Uh, Mr. Mulligan will receive his mother and father. Mom. <laughs> yes. Pop. We just wanted to wish you the best, son. Thanks. What's the matter, Mom? I just can't help it, my little boy. Well, what's there to cry about, Nell? The audience haven't heard him sing yet. Seems like only yesterday that he fell out of his crib. Uh, please, please, we mustn't upset our star. You see, he goes on the air in half an hour. Mommy, may mo mo. What happened to your voice? Mama, me. <laughs> Mommy, may mo mo. Sounds like the old Mick to me. Sure sounds better to me. I couldn't stand it before. I told you to wear your wool socks. Oh, but mom, I don't sing with my feet. Mario, Mario, try your voice again. <laughs> Let me take you in my arms. <laughs> Get a doctor quick. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's perfectly normal. He can't be. What's happened to his beautiful voice? Do you realize this is Mario Mulligan? Oh, then I sent the bill to the wrong place. Wasn't your name originally Mickey Mulligan? Well, no, you sent it to the right place. Doctor, do you mean to tell me that this is his natural voice? Yes, he did have an allergy that affected his vocal cords, but the serum seems to have taken care of that. I'd say this young man was fit as a fiddle. I'm certainly glad you're not sick, Michael, but the next time, please wear your wool socks. <laughs> Doc, does that mean I'll never sing again? I don't know what's to stop you. I sing, the neighbors complain, but my wife prefers me to Sinatra. Freddie, go tell the standby organist to stand by. Yes, sir. Maybe Mario would whistle a tune for us. Oh, Charles, that's an excellent Mr. idea. Mr. Brown to you, Mulligan. <laughs> Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. Those were the wonderful...
wonderful sponsors who bring you our next show. Be with us then, won't you, friends? Uh, oh, just a second, please. We wanted you to know that I got my job back at IBC as Paige. It's good just being plain Mickey Mulligan again. In fact, all of my friends like it much better, not to mention my mom and pop. This was never really me anyway. <laughs> See you next week, friends. <laughs> <laughs>